A whip and a cowboy hat. What movie hero comes first to your mind seeing this? Exactly, Indiana Jones. He became such an iconic action figure that there's hardly any person in the world who's never heard about him. But what is so special about Indiana? What makes him so recognizable and distinguishable from hundreds of other action heroes in cinema? And how did Raiders of the Lost Ark become an all-time favorite classic film? Years ago, before Indiana Jones even existed, Steven Spielberg dreamed of making a James Bond picture. But despite how successful he was, Spielberg was turned down three times by Bond's producers. I've always wanted to direct a James Bond picture. And George, so I, I got that beat. I said, what do you mean? He said, I, I have a better idea. It's called Raiders of the Lost Ark. And so I sat down and kind of told him the story about this archaeologist and how it was like a Saturday matinee serial and he got in one mess after another. And he just said, fantastic, let's do this. It may sound unexpected at first, but Indiana Jones does indeed share many similarities with James Bond. For example, like the 007 agent, Indy is both intelligent and physically capable. He uses his sharp mind to navigate dangerous traps and avoid unnecessary fights. At the same time, just like Bond, Jones can perform the wildest stunts and is always ready to throw himself into action. Indy also possesses his own signature weapon, works on government requests, and of course, like James Bond, he is a notable playboy. And if you take a look at the opening scene of Raiders of the Lost Ark, you'll notice that it has a strong James Bond vibe. It's no wonder that Steven Spielberg was thrilled to create a movie that shared so many similarities with his dream project. But what makes Indiana Jones so special? The first thing that truly distinguishes Indy from the rest of Hollywood's action characters of the era is his horrible planning. Yes, Raiders of the Lost Ark is full of adventure scenes where Jones comes up with super intelligent ideas and preparations, but eventually all of his plans end up not the way he expected them. Indy's character was always a hero that was in over his head, so he was always getting himself hurt and in trouble. And you know, he wasn't quite up to what he was supposed to be, you know, what the old classic Republic serial hero was. And I think that's one of the things that came off the best. Indeed, the classic action hero of the 80s in Hollywood was typically portrayed as a tough Schwarzenegger type guy. Not particularly intelligent, but tough and relentless. Barging in, knocking down doors, and ruthlessly kicking ass. But Indy was different. He had this tendency to mess things up. And I mean, a lot. We see this right from the beginning of Raiders. In the opening scene, where Indy attempts to steal the golden statue, he appears well prepared, having studied the traps and devised a plan. But in the end, nothing goes as he expected. The more we get to know Indiana Jones, the more we realize he is a terrible planner, which is cool for two reasons. First, it's funny. In such a way, Spielberg and Lucas brought a comedy element to the story. And second, it made Indiana more lovable as a character because, like every person in the world, he can make mistakes. It's truly spectacular to watch him navigate his way out of never-ending troubles that he finds himself in. And this is where another unique aspect of Indy emerges. He is remarkably skilled at improvisation and adapting to difficulties. No matter how dire the situation becomes, Jones always manages to find a way out. I'm going after that truck. Oh, I don't know. I'm making this up as I go. This formula of bad planning resulting in outstanding improvisation can be applied to almost every action scene in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Let's take the scene where Indy encounters Marion in the bar, for example. He initially has a straightforward plan of asking for a medallion, but instead... 
I need one of the pieces your father collected. I learned to hate you in the last 10 years. Yeah, his plan fails again. When the Nazis invade the bar and Indy steps in, attempting to save Marion, but instead he accidentally sets the entire building on fire. Let her go. Indy messes up every part of his plan. When he locates the Ark, he attracts the attention of the Nazis because his actions were too conspicuous. The same thing occurs when Indy attempts to halt the plane. His stealthy plan fails once more, leading to a brutal fistfight. And in the final act of the film, when Indy threatens to blow up the Ark, the Nazis easily recognize that he is bluffing. Just blow it up! Every aspect of Indiana Jones' plan in Raiders of the Lost Ark goes terribly wrong, resulting in chaos. However, in the midst of this chaos, Indy always relies on his improvisation skills. It was a scene where Harrison Ford got so deep into his character that he actually changed the script and improvised the whole sequence, making it more true to the character. If you take a look at the behind the scenes footage, you'll see that the scene was originally planned to include a long, choreographed, action packed sequence with Indy fighting a swordsman. Bring it back, that's it. But why didn't we see any of this in Raiders of the Lost Ark? The answer is it's all due to dysentery. Yes, Harrison Ford revealed that he was suffering from dysentery during the filming of the action scene. This made it extremely challenging for him to be outside of his trailer for more than 10 minutes at a time. As a result, it would have taken the crew several days to shoot the fight scene, which was not feasible. That's when Ford came up with a spontaneous idea. Why not have Indy simply shoot the swordsman with a gun? Wouldn't that be cool and unexpected? Steven Spielberg loved the idea, not only because it added humor, but also because it stayed true to Indiana Jones' character, showcasing his talent for improvisation and finding spontaneous solutions to get out of trouble. However, you can't create a convincing action hero based solely on that, right? This is where we need to discuss some of the craziest stunts and visual effects of Raiders of the Lost Ark. They are incredibly well executed, taking the film to the next level and supporting Indiana Jones' status as an iconic action hero. A lot of Indiana Jones, as opposed to visual effects, was really done with live action set special effects, you know, explosions and that sort of thing that demanded a lot of very good and creative stunt work and special effects in terms of live action effects. And the incredible stunts you see were all performed on set, with real people putting their lives at risk to deliver a captivating cinematic experience. Take a look at this particular sequence. It was executed exactly as it appears on the screen. They placed Indiana Jones beneath a moving truck and had him dragged behind it. It's painful just to watch. And no matter how much padding a person wears, the impact would still be felt. And the risk involved is undeniably significant. Harrison Ford wanted to perform most of the tricks on his own. But of course, it was too risky for both him and the film production. That's why for that job, Spielberg hired one of the best stunt doubles in Hollywood. For Raiders, I had three of the greatest stuntmen in history working on this one movie. I had Glenn Randall. Boom! Both in three hairs and this. He come right home. Boom! And then I had Terry Leonard. The only way I want you guys to grab me is if I get in trouble. Yeah. And then I had Vic Armstrong, who did most of Harrison's doubling because he looks so much like Harrison. The audience wouldn't know. He has to physically pick her For the film's most famous action scenes, Spielberg employed all three of his stunt doubles. It was their idea to create the trick, paying homage to the classic stunt from Stagecoach performed by Yakima Kanut. We didn't have room under the back of the third member, the gearbox, not literally the gearbox, but what they call the pumpkin on the back of that truck. If I laid under that truck, it hit me in the chin. So I had to get lower than that pumpkin. So they had a pick and shovel detail out there digging this trench so that thing would go right over my head. And I had clearance underneath the truck. If you carefully rewatch the scene, you'll be able to spot the trench that the stuntman is referring to. An interesting fact is that Harrison Ford himself was also dragged behind the truck for certain shots. 
which led to some bruised ribs. Ford's determination to be involved in risky scenes is truly in line with his character. No matter how challenging the situation became for Indiana Jones, he would persist until the very end, striving for success. Indiana Jones combines elements that seem incompatible. He's super intelligent and an expert in history, but at the same time, he makes horrible mistakes in his calculations and constantly puts himself and others in danger. He's in good physical shape, and with his desperate temper and sharp mind, he can get out of any trouble. However, he also has weaknesses and fears. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? Seriously, how many American action heroes from the 80s had phobias? I don't remember any. Indiana has his own Achilles heel, which added depth to his character and made him more relatable. In numerous scenes throughout the movie, you can observe genuine horror on Indy's face. However, the most memorable moments were those involving snakes. Steven Spielberg, being a legendary director, created a truly immersive experience for Harrison when he encountered a cobra. Yes, it was a real snake. Fortunately for Harrison, there was a glass barrier separating them. Placing the actor in front of the actual venomous snake was the most effective method to capture the genuine emotion from the actors. In the famous shot of me facing the cobra, uh, you can barely see a reflection on the sheet of glass. And perhaps the element that completed Indiana Jones's character was his iconic costume. It may appear quite simple, yet it is incredibly memorable and recognizable. So how was it created? A costume has to perfectly marry the character so that the audience buys the whole thing. The audience had to buy Harrison, even in this exaggerated heroic part, as an earthy, brilliant archeologist. It had to look like a costume that he slept in and had worn every day of his life. The costume designer, Deborah Nadulman, used a Swiss army knife and a steel brush to age Indiana's costume. For the hat, she applied dirt and physically manipulated it by rolling it in her hands to give it the appearance of having gone through decades of memorable adventures. The combination of humor, wild action, failures, brilliant improvisation, crazy stunts, and genuine fear for the hero these are the key elements that made Indiana Jones such a unique character. We can admire his intelligence and physical abilities while also relating to his weakness, seeing him as just an ordinary guy, like one of us. Anyone could potentially find themselves in Indy's shoes. Steven Spielberg and George Lucas broke the canon of classic heroes. Indiana Jones isn't a muscular warrior or a cold-blooded killer. He doesn't possess high-tech weapons or have knowledge of martial arts. Indy can't even properly care for a woman. But what he does have is something even more captivating. Indiana Jones is an adventurer. His passion for history and ancient secrets, combined with his improvisation skills, is truly infectious. When you see him on screen, you can't help but want to be Indiana Jones.